my god one. What do John the Baptist and Kermit the Frog have in common? Uh, I don't know. They both baptize people. Wrong. Oh. They have the same middle name. Oh, wow. That is bad. Wow. Goblins at least make you chuckle. The. The. Why do bicycles fall over? Because uh, they hadn't been baptized. Too tired. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's funny. Too tired. Jo- uh, y'all didn't like the John the Baptist one? That one's kind of lame. I ain't going to lie. What's the warmest? Uh, where's the warmest spot in your house? The baptismal. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. The corner. The corner. It's always 90 degrees. Oh, well. <laughs> Needs explanation. The joke that needs a little more explanation. Well, Randy, who didn't well. say where you're from, I'm sorry they didn't like your John the Baptist joke. Hmm. I liked it. But hey, I got good news, people. We don't have John the Baptist here. We have Willie the Baptizer here. What's it Willie. like sitting next to your friend? <laughs> <laughs> he's no longer your boss. He's now your friend. Who said we're friend. Friend. Is that awkward? Yeah. Is no, that an awkward, awkward situation? Has the relationship <laughs> changed now? I, like... I miss him. I was so excited when I saw him on the schedule for this podcast. Uh, well, that's awesome. I was excited, too. I was excited when you texted me because I realized I had totally forgotten that I was supposed to do the podcast. And then when you texted me, I said, oh, crap. Yeah, yeah, that is tomorrow. Oh, yeah, I was excited to see you. I'm excited. No, the other day, we were at church the other day, and we hung out and didn't go to church and stood in the lobby for an hour and just talked. That's good. It's just good to catch wow. up. Wow. I was just wondering if the dynamic no. feels different since you're sitting beside yeah. each other. We're just other's. acquaintances. We're just like two co-workers. Passing in the night. We're just two co-workers on a, on a mission here of this podcast. And uh, yeah, we used to work together in a closer relationship, but uh, you know, now we're in different spots. So I yeah. think it's good. There you go. How are you doing? Everybody keeps asking me how you're doing. People keep asking me how you're doing. I'm like, I don't know. I don't work there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they Maybe that can be your answer. Like, oh. yeah. No, I say, I have no idea. It doesn't work for me. I, yeah, I haven't seen him. <laughs> so I don't know. We're just friends. I don't know. He's I'm doing fishing baits. I'm swell. assuming that's awesome. Oh, it's, man. It's been fun. Good you sling them. Hmm. I'm tired. I go oh. to bed earlier. Yeah. yeah, what's your work day look like now? Yeah. I get well, so I get to work later than I did here. He's a man of counter. Hey, Ty, you get there later? Mm-hmm. Come huh. on. I I work till six every. You know, in the Duck Commander days, slow day about three forty five. Gonna slip on out and go fishing or something. I don't. That's that's gone. Go fishing. Come on. On a pond. I oh. did see him fishing. He was fishing in my pond. Oh, did you catch any? No, nah, that thing's a gar. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who was in charge of stocking it. Jace told, well, no, Jace told me that day. He said, you know, them crappie and Willie's paws are going to take him back off. I said, he restocked it last winter. He said, no. I said, yeah. Did I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't yes, know that either. Yes, you uh, did. Yeah. yeah. Crap. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, your so brother's now ba- I gotta beat Jay's to the, it. the brother's yeah. back over your brother's oh back over there catching all your fish. Yeah, I gotta yeah go they've back. been in there about a year now. I mean, I ain't been over there on them, but it's research and development. Willie's yeah, pond yeah. Is. it's a test tank, Finn commander pond, test tank. My pond is a gar, there's no fish in it. No, but your dad's just fire. Your dad's is pretty good. It is on fire. Yeah, we've taken stuff. How is the fishing market? The fishing market, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is that it's. It's good. It's, it's good. February, so it better be good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's picking up. February it's, it's in the south. That's a that's a good thing. We sell a lot of fishing things. I'm still learning. I don't even know what half of it is. <laughs> People ask me stuff, but it's it's you can either look like a dummy and lie to them, or you can be like, man, I don't really know. Let's learn together. <laughs> but the dude that used to, my the dude that bought the store that owned the started the store, my dad bought it from him was in there one day. He was like, hey, you want to know how you learn how to fish every bait in here? I said, no, you can't. There's too many. Like, nobody does that. He goes, no, nah, you just read the back of the package. Oh. I said, uh, nice, nice job hack. Pro just, tip. Uh, just read the back of the package. Pro tip. Bye. They tell you on the package how Mr. to do Bobby. This. Bobby Phillips. The devil's in the details. So what, what have you been up to there, Willie? Oh, man, I've been busy. Um, what, I've been traveling a lot. I've been gone. Um I just went to Kansas and hung out with Mr. LaRoche at his cool. place. And, um, yeah, I've been moving and shaking, teaching a little from the Bible. and mm. Full-time granddad. Full-time granddad. Uh, doing a lot of Buck Commander stuff. And, yeah, just doing what I do. 
He's doing what <laughs> he's working he's, for the man. Here's what I'll tell you. I've <laughs> seen, working for the man. I've seen this boy more in the past month than I've seen hey, him in the past two years. Right. I know. Right. And now I look down and I'm like, man, who's calling me? And I'm like, mm-hmm. that's really that's, that's bizarre. Okay, we're back, baby. We're it's 2012, hey. son. Let's roll. That's what it feels like. Well, I lost my assistant, so I had to like get back on the train. I had to learn <laughs> some stuff. I had to Have you messed Google up how anything? to get to the office and I got up here and <laughs> I know I walk in, everything's being Torn down. That's basically fumigating from John David's all. By the way, while we're here, let me just Uh-oh. go ahead and uh, Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. just get something off my chest. Uh-oh. This is- so this guy leaves, but he leaves his office. Like, it literally. See, the, you know what's funny? I mean, if it were a toilet, it, I would I would say you didn't flush. That was That's what your office looked like. <laughs> When you left, that was all the guys. Stuff. You know who cleaned up your? You know who cleaned it out? I heard. Oh yeah, but yeah. You, you know who? And you didn't care because now you're like, oh, who cares? He had to go in there and do something. That so. was. I took all my stuff. All my stuff was gone. Your cousin, who shared that office with me for a while, still had piles. Actually, of stuff. yeah, it was all my stuff. Yeah, most of it was just your stuff <laughs> that I kept putting I know. places. I sh- So it's on me. I should have told him right before you left. Hey. Bring all my stuff. I didn't know where you wanted that stuff. It had been in there for years. <laughs> I actually found some really good stuff in there. Oh, he! It I was mean, so funny. It was really good. Out. Yeah, I, I, it man, I found some. Serious. He would find a random thing. Say, "Ooh, need that." Oh, I'm like, for sure, need. That's a strong word. I put it all in my office. Yeah, he said. I said, "What well, do we do with? We loading it on carts and stuff." He said. Put that down there at the end. I'll come pick it up day by day. So every day he leaves here, he just has a little armful, puts it Arm in his truck. Armful But you didn't think about like cleaning it up and like sweeping up maybe a bit yeah, or vacuuming. Was that was it, or, or was it, it like? Uh, no, now they tore it up. But I'm saying on the way out, was there any thought like, you know what? I probably should just. Oh, I thought I did a pretty good job. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I will say when we moved that couch, the amount of stuff that had gone behind and under was. Somewhat appalling. I mean, there were. I don't even know. Dude, I had the worst. I couldn't breathe. For it was worse than COVID. I mean, like, <laughs> whatever the funk was growing in that place. I didn't like that office. It was rough. <laughs> I just kind of hung out in that one corner and looked at all the things that were in there and was I was afraid of them. Oh yeah. man, that yeah. was that was a good time. He hung that one on me. <laughs> got you. He got me. Got, he got you got one me. last time. Like, he got me on that. That was a good one. Touche. <laughs> Touche. Oh. Man. Touche. Yeah, you you did leave, and then Harry's gonna move in your office, and he come down there. He said, "This ain't gonna work." So now they tearing up the floors in our office. Yeah, I, I, finally, yeah. I did finally get a solid ceiling in my office. I've had them holes in that thing for a while. I just dealt with. It. I was like, "Yeah, you know, it's fine." But oh, uh, there's holes all in the ceiling. It's a new day, boys. Yeah, it's a y'all new day at Duck Commander. Yeah. I need a new chair. Yeah, there's a big remodel. Happening. You need a new chair. Mm-hmm. There was one in my I'll, office. I left that. I don't know if that's in the budget or not. We Harry picked out some expensive floors in there. So <laughs> here's what you don't do. I've been sitting in that brown chair since it was down at field. You don't let your controller be in charge of the remodel budget because he knows exactly how much we got. That's Everybody true. else scared to spend money, but Harry knows exactly he, he knows exactly how much the we CPA got. knows exactly how much funds we have. And yeah, so you're telling me to get a pillar? You probably gonna want to. Or just some kind of mild lift kit. Maybe put you some blocks under it or something. I'm not sure. But What's happening to it? It's just falling? It's just, you know, it's, I've been sitting in it for 20 years. <laughs> hey, it should be conformed to your butt. It is. All the way down to the wood. Hey, you, you try holding him for 20 years and <laughs> see what kind of shape you're in. <laughs> He's tired. <laughs> I, there's nothing wrong with that chair. It's just tired. It's uh, tired. It's too tired. <laughs> oh, that chair just, that chair groans. <laughs> Uh, Galvin, you, y'all have had a little fun down there uh, the, since wintertime hit, ain't you? you? You've had some office companions? Wow. <laughs> what? Wow. <laughs> this is what? Kurt Lively? Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Uh, when this last cold snap hit, apparently all the food on the outside was gone. And little field mice moved in. Oh, they did. We got a mice problem again. Not, right. not anymore. Not, not no more. No, Here? they gone. In this office? No, the no. one that uh, warehouse down the street. Oh, because that baseball team keeps it so warm in there. So you know, yeah. uh, uh, they come in there, buddy. 
everywhere. Well, all that Victor dog food was in there. Dude, I'm sitting in my house the other night, and I look down, and this mouse, not only did he, like, I thought we had a deal. Like, mice come out when they, you see them, then they run off. Oh, this guy's like, what are you looking at? I dare you. I no, dare he's just you. looking at me like, and I'm looking at him, I'm like, really? And he, he, so he scurries under the thing, and I'm like, I'm fixing to get that. He comes back out, just chins up on me, looking at me like, you're still there? I'm like, yeah, I'm still here. Well, you ain't going to the kitchen. I t- well, then I said, all right, little buddy, you're going you're gonna to be running one day or night, and all of a sudden you're going to hit something, and you're not going to be able to move, and then you're going to realize, yeah. Do not gum it. Seek he a put treasure. a sticky thing out, and I can't move my feet anymore. Yeah. Do not. Seek I've had so treasure. I've had so many my they it man they've been rolling. It's in. been a plague of them since this last cold yeah. snap. Yeah. I don't know, but it's all the little ones. It's all the little field mice. Yeah. It's They're not no bitty yeah. ones. It ain't the big cotton rats. Or, well, we got that thing living at your mom and dad. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, the, whatever. That's squirrel. Thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm going to buy a, uh, I'm going to get me a pet chicken snake for my living room so that it'll eat the mice. <laughs> there you go. That'll go over That's well. what yeah. I'd do. Why not? Hey. It's when, better than a cat. When we come back from this first break, will you tell a story about when you threw a snake on your wife? Oh, I love that. Well, yeah. Let's take a break and do that. <laughs> That's a good one. Got one? Sorry. I know. It's almost springtime, and you, you couldn't be any happier, could you? Praise Heck no. I'm wearing short-legged britches today just to just to celebrate. And see, I wasn't even thinking about the short-legged britches. I was thinking you you going to get to take your shoes off finally again. <laughs> you know, and you'll feel that soft, lush grass under your feet because we've been treating just our like yards with Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, just like, Sunday. Just like carpet. I guarantee. God, the only man I know that got grass stains on his feet. The boy's always barefooted. Sunday can help you grow a beautiful lawn without guesswork or nasty chemicals. Their custom plans include fertilizer and everything you need to easily care for your lawn. And with ingredients like seaweed, iron, and molasses, you can feel good with kids and pets being around it. All you have to do is visit GetSunday.com, put in your address, and their lawn analysis tool does the rest. Then they use the soil and climate data to create a personal nutrient plan delivered to your door when you need it, just attach the ready-to-use pouch to a garden hose and spray. It takes less than 15 minutes. Best of all, this stuff really works because my yard was the greenest it's ever been last year. And it was the first time that we had been using it. I've used it all through the winter. So I'm actually looking forward to getting to mow my grass for the first time this year. That That's going to be fun. I want to see how it bounces back. But Sunday is offering our listeners 20% off. Full season plans start at just $119, and you can get 20% off when you visit GetSunday.com slash Duck20 at checkout. That's 20% off your custom plan at GetSunday.com slash Duck20. So you were brave enough or dumb enough or I don't really know the correct term to throw a snake on Corey? Uh, well, technically I threw it in the vicinity. Um, <laughs> so this was about year two of marriage and they've made it. Just remember that folks. So I was in the yard doing some yard work and I come across a little, what kind of king snake, but it was a smallish king snake. Uh-huh. So I picked it up. I took it in the house. I was going to show it off. And, uh, my wife was taking a shower <laughs> And then sometimes in life, opportunity pops up, and I'm like, how funny would this be? So I just go in there, and it's, we have like the curtain, you know, that hangs, and so I just threw it over the top and then scurried out, and I mean, it was the funniest. The noises, all the shower curtain gets ripped off, and she was not happy. He- Oh, not, so you didn't only throw it on her. You threw it yeah, on her in, in the her, shower. In the shower. Wow. Does oh. she know that you did that? Uh, well, I think she assumed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many people are bouncing in there when she's in the shower. Oh, but yeah, I mean. Out of there. Oh, man. It was just wow. me and the snake. Man, I thought what wow. I did to Brittany last year was bad with a snake, but that ain't nothing, no. I just knew we have a garter snake that lives in our flower bed. He lives in a little the sprinkler cap thing, yeah. the irrigation control. Well, I knew he's in there because I took it off to turn my sprinklers on. 
And he just stayed. So the next day I said, hey, I, I can't get this cap off. you got small fingers. You, you come in here and get that thing. Uh-uh. And when, <laughs> when she stuck her finger in that sprinkler cap, it, it just, he, he come up here and licked her finger. Uh-uh. Buddy, gone. That Tennessee hillbilly was was just jetting <laughs> down across my yard. Down the road. I'm talking about, and she said, there's something in there. I was like, no, what are you talking about? You know? And I said, "Look, there ain't nothing in here." When I popped it off, he just sitting there smiling, and I start. I couldn't. I couldn't control it. I started oh, dying laughing. laughing. Snake yeah. jokes, huh? I never. Well, did. it's a harmless snake. It's a garter snake. Oh, he ain't gonna snake, do nothing. Johnny, to you. He, that's, what's he gonna do? To, I mean, he just come up here and give her a little kiss on the finger. And I'm proud to report he's still there this year. So nothing snuffed him out in a year. You can go there right now and go pet him if you want to. So, well, we used to have a box that uh, that covered up the uh, cutoff valve. And so every time you open this thing, there was a black widow spider. I mean, I don't like want them as a pet. Money. Ooh. And so I was telling this older guy about this spider, and I said, "I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna open this up, and there's gonna be a black widow spider. I don't care how many I killed, they always came back." So I opened it up, and there was no spider. And I thought, "Dad, gun, there's always a spider." And I kid you not, when I looked down, I saw her crawling inside of my pants at the bottom oh oh no i saw the spider go up but i'm gonna tell you i was standing there in my underwear in about three seconds and here's the crazy thing i never did find the spider like i'm just standing there in my underwear and saw i mean shoes are off i don't know where that thing went but it disappeared i saw it go in inside the pants leg and then you 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 shed said pants leg. I lag. shed it fast because I thought. I mean, I got so much room for that thing. You like one. You look like one of them basketball players coming off the bench, didn't you? Just yeah. got them britches that just exactly. Rip off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but what if I would have seen it? What if? Oh, you'd have felt him eventually. Felt her eventually. Yeah, I imagine suppose. that wow. just dough popping you up in the inner thigh region. Oh, mm. right below the nether region. Yeah, that's oh. a bad deal there. Mm. I don't uh, know that I've ever been bit by a spider. But that's where all small insects end up for whatever reason. So you know that's where she'd have got you. Oh yeah. I mean, well, most of them end up in your mouth, like when you're sleeping. Yeah. Like, don't we eat like a thousand that. spiders in our lifetime? I've heard that. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you're a mouth breather. Yeah. Oh, Glad they're not fattening. Uh, <laughs> I think my favorite snake was when Phil chopped the copperhead. So he took a shovel and he hit a copperhead. There's probably four inches of snake. Then he throws it at the dog. Don't ask me why. (laughs) And the dog gets bitten by the piece of the snake. I remember that. That's old Jesse. The dog's head's full up. That was old Jesse. Yep. Wasn't it? Yeah, mm-hmm. Jesse's the one that. Yeah. Jesse's been snake bit like fifty times. So oh yeah, because he poisonous. Like yeah, he couldn't stand it. Mm-mm. He couldn't stand he to see to a snake and kill it. He him. had to kill every snake he run across. That's little a rat terrier. Oh, it was so funny to watch. He'd throw that thing ten foot up in the air. Oh yeah. Just, ah! <laughs> just throw him up and, until it ceased to move. And then he's like, "No, I'm good with it now. Everything's good." It was. My dog does. Them dogs down there though. Upper head, boy. I remember. I was walking like on the kitchen side. That remember that? What do you call them things? It was two steps going into the porch that mm-hmm. cave, and she used to have that little oh, a little awning coming yeah. off there. Yeah, yeah, I got oh, you. Yeah, but the but the two steps and and there was a piece of a round uh, like a telephone pole laid there, <laughs> and, the two, and it was a crack. It was a little crack yeah. between. Oh, I, I went okay. to. That's the worst explanation of that I've ever heard in my life. But yeah, okay, I know now. Oh, I, he's talking I about built the, that. He's talking about the it's arbor the two thing. Two concrete steps. There's an yeah. arbor. The concrete steps yeah. roll into. Yeah, it's actually a telephone pole. Yeah, yeah I put. I built all you that. Built thing. that. But the crack. Yeah, the crack was like Snake City. I guarantee. That's you. That's where they come in. And I out. went to step up on that thing one time, and I bet you I did a backflip. Man, there was a copperhead in there. I know it. That's where the copperheads live. It's crazy. That's where Phil cut the snake into. Yeah, yeah right down there. Yeah. How'd you oh. feel the crack in? They finally did. Because Johanna, she seen one too. And okay, she got it. We cleaned it. said, fill it in. Fill it in. Fill it in, boys. It ain't there, boys. Yeah. Snake. Godwin, how many backflips have you done in your life? I, uh, now that you brought that up, oh, I'm several. just. Several. I used to do them all the time. Did you? Mm-hmm. You were the kid that would do flip, like just the guy that would do a flip. Yeah. I always wanted to be. And, and yeah. do a flip. 
when he was little god when his yeah. parents would put a donut behind him and he would do a backflip yeah. that's how they trained him <laughs> and the flying flea was when born. he did the yeah when he did the, <laughs> me doing back when he did the backflip he would grab that donut in his mouth <laughs> that was good <laughs> There's always that kid, though, that just standing there and all of a sudden pops a flip. Oh, yeah. They were always the coolest kid. And the one well, would, or the one that couldn't stand yeah. to stay well, off the trampoline. I was until I started working for Duck Commander. That's true. Yeah, that's true. What happened? Oh. This K's cooking so dang good you can't get away from the table. Well, when's the last time you worked down at K's? It's been a while, but, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, I just would have thought. Oh, once had left K's, I would have yeah. thought that it would have shed off. It, nah. Yeah, I'm just saying, I'm using your logic. Didn't you know? work. Didn't work, boys. It don't go the same in reverse as it yeah, does Yeah, I know. And I was wondering when <laughs> that. Take some time. It's still going down. So, speaking of snakes, I was, uh, so we used to have a, um, we put a wire box out there in the water. So, we'd catch our perch and we'd throw them in the wire box to bait the um uh, Trot lines. A live well, if you will. It's a live, yeah, yeah. very amateur live well. Oh, and, that's um, a nice live well. So the snake, so what happened was the snakes would get in there to eat the perch. Well, then they were kind of in the basket. And so I went down there, there's giant, I mean, a giant water snake. And so I shot him, like with a 410. Uh, he had, I remember he had a BB hole in his head, blood coming out of his head. Picked him up, towed him all the way back up to the cook shack. I threw him in the freezer where we stacked all our meat for the crawfish traps. Like we had everything in there. Yeah, all, all scraps. All kind of animals. Yeah. Yeah, oh, like, raccoon, stuff to, possum. Stuff, yeah. Whatever yeah. was laying on Whatever the side we found of the on the road. Yeah, so. <laughs> and I was the chop man. Was On this day, I'd actually, I was a chop man, but I was also bringing in meat. So I just threw him in there. I'll go down a little bit later to chop up some meat for the crawfish traps. And I grabbed that snake. And he literally turned up and like reared back, ready to bite me. Wow. I carried him all the way from the river up there. He had a hole in his head, put him in the freezer. And then when I grabbed, he just coiled back up. Oh, they're the he devil. He was huge. They're the devil. Literally, but that's where they came unfortunately from. Unfortunately from here, I had the cleaver. I was, I was already in chop mode anyway. So he just got a quick body chop. But he was still alive. No, sir. Oh, we'd, we'd never be able to talk about this if Cy was here. Oh, no. He, he, no, he threatened to shoot up. every one of us. But, he don't like snakes. But he's know. not here. The boss is here. and Snakes and don't I'm, scare me. And, and I've had, man, my cheeks hurt. I've been laughing so much already. Yeah, let's take another break. We'll be back right after this. You know what? I've always said. Tell us. You, you got to just keep learning it no matter what you do. You know? Like. I, we in the springtime now. I'm about to figure out how all you boys been catching them fish looking at them. I ain't ever done it. I've always resisted the temptation, but I'm about to, you know. And, oh, it's going to blow your mind. And we're going to start a, a regulation garden at the house this year, too, so I'm learning how to garden all that kind of good stuff. Look, if you're into always learning, you know that it helps keep you sharp just like ZipRecruiter. Their AI is always learning. So if you're hiring, their AI gets better and faster at finding the right candidates for all of your roles. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash duck. ZipRecruiter uses its powerful technology to find and match the right candidates up to your job. Then it proactively presents those candidates to you. You can easily review these recommended candidates and invite your top choices to apply for your job which encourages them to apply faster. There's no wonder ZipRecruiter is the number one rated hiring site in the United States based on G2 ratings. And now you can try ZipRecruiter for free at this exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash duck. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash D-U-C-K. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Hey, listen to this. I was running. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from a pack of wolves. Hey, we made it 105 episodes before he ever told that story. Really? Because he couldn't get off of no legs. Yeah. Speaking of crawfish traps. So, yeah, we were crawfish fishermen for a while. So we'd run them, we'd get all the crawfish, and then we would take them to the store. There's no way people, like, you, you're not going to believe this. We would go into the grocery store, sell them to the grocery store, and then we would dump them in a, in a boat. And they had it at the grocery store. Live crawfish. They had live crawfish at the groceries at Super One where Uncle Joe is. That that I store, worked there for a year. That specific store. 
and we would dump them in there. So when you went and bought crawfish, you get you went and like put them in your thing, weighed them, and paid for them at the. Oh, I believe was, that was a thing. Like they was just like mm-hmm. potatoes and corn yeah, and everything yeah. else. Oh, they, them and, and we were one of the suppliers, so we were supplying them with crawfish. So that's awesome. And now Johnny D's weigh them inners every day. That's right. right. That's how it happened. Sold half a pound right before I came here. <laughs> Eleven dollars. So we were. Uh, so like I said earlier, we were in charge of uh, feeding. Phil had no concept of buying food to put in these things. So we would a crawfish will eat anything, right? I mean, mm-hmm. it's crawfish. That's season always now. been the most fascinating. So y'all, the, that's what you were talking. About. About. Y'all just fill up roadkill. Yeah, he thing. would just oh, say yeah. we need more food, and so we, dr- me and Jace, drive them down the road looking for something dead. <laughs> and, I mean, if it was like super turned, like like awfully smelly, we wouldn't pick it up. But if it was, you know, around the edge, we would throw that in the back of the truck and chop it up. So I'm You'd chopping hold your up. nose and go. Ah, oh, like <laughs> dogs and cats and like oh birds. I mean, I mean whatever was in the road passed away already. All right, so don't get all sentimental, but um. <laughs> So Possum. life was a lot tougher back then. Damn. So we're throwing anything in this deal. So we're chopping up stuff and uh, you just need a little hunk, you know? And um, so we go run the traps. We'll run the traps probably the funnest. Cause you, so you pick it up. Sometimes you have a ton of crawfish, but I mean, everything gets in these traps. So there were snakes all the time. Like you would grab oh. that thing. There'd be two. Them high. diamond, them diamond back water snakes. Uh, oh, you and can't get your hand out of there before you get bit either. They're so mean. That's yeah. what, yeah, that's what uh, come alive in the freezer. So uh, I pulled it up one time and I have a green river eel. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So a, a good sized river eel. So we, so we're like, what is that? It's an eel. So we dumped it out and it's, splash around the boat and so now i don't know why i did what i did i so feel like when he had the duck he would bite the back of his head and like that's how you put it away so i decided i was gonna bite this eel's head to see if i could like kill it with oh, my yeah. mouth i don't some kind of rite of passage there thing i go. guess it's a, team. a man yeah. so you under dry right. yeah. who's a man like let's go <laughs> i'm not it's I, me against the eel I, and my teeth that just put such a foul taste and texture in my mouth just hearing that oh it's it's bad mm. it's really bad mm. so i got my teeth on this thing <laughs> and i'm squeezing like literally all i got and i am not puncturing this skin in fact, it's impossible, I think, to puncture an eel skin with your human teeth. So I abandoned the, the mission, but what happened was the slime got stuck in my teeth. Oh. So every all my teeth had eel slime stuck in. I mean, for a while. Like, I could not get the taste out of my mouth. So I'm just saying, oh, if you're out there no. listening, <laughs> and if you happen to come upon a river eel, do not try to bite its head I, thinking you how did you hold that chopping. sucker to get him i had it enough? with both hands like i had it with both hands like in a but vice these, grip and things like, are like a rubber bar of soap i mean oh, you, can't, you can't you can't you can't hold them things oh wow, that's incredible i mean i'm most impressed you held him forget yeah. trying to bite him that's just dumb but how old were you i hope 12 i was 17 <laughs> oh. yeah yeah Aren't you married like six months later uh that may have been his bachelor trip. That, well, hey, that's one of the stories she heard that thought, then she thought, that's well, the kind of guy I need. Yeah. yeah. If that's, a guy, that's a guy who would take a chance. If he'll buy it up. <laughs> a guy who's <laughs> trying to prove something. He's hungry. <laughs> like, that's just, yeah. in fact, she looked at me and said, this guy's going somewhere. Who else would try that? Yeah. Did you get it out of your teeth before the wedding? <laughs> <laughs> well, that goes along with no, her. No, she did. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Corey <laughs> looked and said, man, that's just like my dad and my brother. I'm, that's what I'm saying. Sadly, you can't really appreciate that story unless yeah. you've picked up on them slimy rascals, or at least <laughs> oh, tried to. Every time you grab him he just goes further and you just you, that man you, ate you, an you eel can't catch up with him. No, that's, where it, him. that's where it started i kept hitting him with the boat paddle but he kept sliding off yeah <laughs> and he kind of made me mad i'm like okay now, okay watch about, this about yeah. face to face I'm me and you me and the man. river hill and I mean, he was he was making like he was making noises like i mean i was hurting him he's but, down there in that river right now telling a whole different version of this story oh, so boys yeah. you go up there something got me and that sucker tried to bite me and all i did was kept sliming him y'all just keep on remember when in doubt keep sliming. are they like spewing slime out of their body you think yeah pretty something? much yeah. oh my gosh yeah it was all in my mouth that's their <laughs> that. that's their defense mechanism oh, is to man. secrete Oh, slime. Was, so I mean, it's like, oh, 
Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> See, John D., can you imagine? You the realize no, the you realize how proud your wife would be if you well, had some cool story like that? Well, when I was eight, I bit a Stretch Armstrong. Remember those? Mm -hmm. In half. It was oh, gross. My but it was more like. Was that when you were laying in your king size bed in your queen. own room? Yeah. Queen. And it was more chemically than it was nature's <laughs> slime, but it it stuck with me for a while. Never bite a Stretch Armstrong. No good. Oh, <laughs> it wasn't Armstrong. good, huh? I'd have never believed it. Something you could stretch from here to that door wasn't no good. I, I'd never believed it. <laughs> well, it got like it. I said, have a little taste. I said, it. I wonder what would happen <laughs> if I just bit its arm in half. And John that's David's my stories. Uh, that's why, like, rich people's, like, rich kids' stories, you can't really, because he's like, his biggest thing he ever did was that time he slept without the uh, the the case on the uh, pillow. You know, he's like, I just, oh, I, yeah. I, I laid my head on it. It didn't even have the pillowcase on it. It was, it was crazy. <laughs> Meanwhile, Willie was like, like, hey, I was sleeping I'm in like, the laundry room. Did your room. pillow smell like urine? No. I'm like, well, I don't know what number that... one, every pillow we had smelled like pee. So... Oh. <laughs> Sorry. But... And had duck lice. Hey, on. here's the deal. <laughs> yes. We both wet the bed, but I had a nose spray to make me stop. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's the difference between oh, me. What? I, I did a nose spray every night before bed, so I wouldn't wet the bed. My mom put on plastic I sheets. Never yeah, we didn't do that. I've never heard of that. We had nose spray. I also never had a worm or cockroach oh. crawling my ear while i was sleeping mm. have you did you ever get worms did you have to do the deworming pill whoa 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 whoa, whoa. Time, out, time out time out i had some. that's got to be another no time out. let's de take a break we talking about who here was deworm that's not to think about we'll find that out in here in about 20 seconds okay so we all talked about it we all you know notice it i look great i feel great and even the ladies notice it. I'm just kidding. Nobody notices. But I do have made some changes in life. And I, you know what? I've started to get healthier, started losing weight. And one of the things I've also started doing is taking athletic greens because I, they had me on vitamins, this and that. But with athletic greens, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help start your day right. Look, every morning I wake up, put eight ounces of water. Put the athletic grains in there, shake that up, boom, gone. And I got to be honest, I had my doubts, but I legit feel really good. I'm feeling great. Other people around me getting sick. My immune system's like stiff arm, can't touch me. Um, and so I, I really enjoy it. I really like taking it because uh, I do feel way better. And here's one of the best parts. Whatever diet you're on, I change diets every week. I do this. I do that. I can't stick with one, so I just try and find a new one I like. Hey, this is going to work with it. It helps you sleep better, helps you recover better. Uh, and it's really not that expensive. Three bucks a day to feel better. I think we'd all pay that. You're already probably spending three bucks on Cokes, making yourself feel like crap. So they've got great reviews recommended by professional athletes and they've made it easy athletic greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune supporting vitamin d it's a little drop bottle i put it in there too and five free travel packs with your first purchase all you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash duck again that's athleticgreens.com slash duck to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance You so what you're telling me is you were taking ivermectin before it was cool. <laughs> oh, is that yeah, what it is? That's right. I mean, that's what you yeah. deworm stuff with is I, ivermectin. Does yeah. it make your mouth red? Oh, like I don't. These pills made your teeth red, tongue red. Everything was red, and it was dewormer. Mine was purple. But the beauty of the internet is, 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 is this I think still? I, I want to Google... know somebody out there. Surely somebody from Missouri or Northern Arkansas. <laughs> Was dewormed as a child. You were dewormed with a purple. It was purple. This one was red. And it was the most nastiest. Oh, this was awful. Uh, you just about throw up trying to get it down. But did you have worms? Like I was full of worms. I don't know. I don't. No, know. I, I, you my, were my, something. I had something full of them. Something. Yeah. What were you doing? How, how did you find them? If you'd have I put mean, them out, it, I, mean, is, I don't want to get. Is like, that the worms? Oh, like, there's, is that why it's bred into humans? Like when you you take a dump, you stand up, you look at it. Yeah, to, yeah. You, you're checking when for it worms. moves about six inches after you've done it. Yeah, you got worms. So it was swimming. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I don't. Oh my. Is this like? Is am I the only one? <laughs> oh my. I had uh, pillowcases. I, I want to hear about know. the. I want to hear these emails that I don't because I know there's other people. That. Yeah, and then we'd have to take the worm pills and. So what all parasites did you have as a yeah. kid? You had worms? I know y'all had a lice problem there for a while. Oh, we had li lice. was like 
They just lived there. <laughs> Lice was like Friday. <laughs> That's why Phil cut our hair. He just took the clippers and just shaved that mess off. He's like, all right, boys, somebody's got a lies. Everybody line up. Everybody got a buzz. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> wow. Oh. So this how, this is not how it went down up in the when you were in the No, in the not on the street. Bed. Not on the street you live on, sir. When um, you had your monogrammed initials on your door as you walked yeah. in this way. No, I had Dan Marley on my door. Thank you. <laughs> oh my goodness. So you, you confirmed had worms and lice. Yeah. Wow. Worms for sure. Oh lice. Yeah. I mean, I had, all the uh, time. Like that's crazy. I ain't ever Did y'all have lice all the time? Uh hmm. Well, if, if you I know, had it one time. I obviously don't have a very hospitable environment for lice up there, so the, I, lice don't survive on the moon. Uh, so. What else? Yeah, yeah. I, then I had the roach. Yeah, I had a roach crawl in my ear, uh, hit my um, eardrum. That's the, <laughs> that's not fun. And didn't your dad like pour syrup in your ear? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm screaming. I I'm I don't I don't I, I can't see anything. All I know is my head feels like it's fixing to explode, and so dad's like. Mom's like, what's wrong with him? And so, I, and I, I can't even, I can't even keep my head straight. And you don't be quiet. I'm on whoop. You. Well, it was all that. Then he was like, okay, he's actually really hurt. And then, so he he turns my head to the side and he starts pouring something in. I don't know what he's pouring in there. Well, it's the cure all of cure alls, camphophenite. <laughs> yep. He just pours it in my ear. Yep. And what happened? Everything just got. It didn't like make the pain go away exactly, but it like everything just got slower. And so I'm like, it still hurts. And so finally Phil says, take him to the hospital. I don't know what's wrong with him. So we go up there and the dude looks in my ear and he goes, um, it's a giant ball of wax. And I'm like, oh, that's embarrassing. But I'm like, why does this hurt? So like, why would wax hurt that bad? And then he said, wait a minute. Uh, it's got hair. And I'm like, huh? And he said, it's got wings. And we he said it's got wings, I'm like, hang on. And he goes, it's alive. And so now we know something is living in my ear. So from we went from wax to hairball yeah. to flying He didn't. Ball. He was just All seeing this blob. He's moving. So he reached in these tweezers and he grabs a hold. It, what it was is a water roach. And it had literally oh, just. Oh, one of them big. Yeah, and he one crawled out my ear and just disappeared like Star Trek 2. And so he reaches in with these tweezers and he starts pulling that sucker out. And I'm going to tell you all something. When something is coming out of your ear hole, you've never felt pressure. I mean, it, it feels like your head's fixing to explode. I have, well, so I'm screaming and then it just went pop and he pops that thing out. Immediate, right. It, yeah, and then he, but for an hour, he had to dig out legs and wings and I, I mean, whatever else fell off in my ear. Oh, uh, from the struggle. Because I left the door open and I left my light on. So I'm sleeping like mouth open. And I've got no telling how many insects crawling on top of me. Oh, that's four inches from crawling in your mouth. That'd have been a way better path. That's two yeah. inches. Oh, I'd have just ate him. Yeah, that, that's... you don't want him going in your ear, especially because I didn't know he was in. I didn't know what. I didn't know what was. I mean, yeah. I thought I was. You can't like, check your ear. No, like, that's that's most of. So you... Phil, when he poured the camphophenic in my ear, it kind of like drowned him a little bit. Like he, yeah, he still kind of moving. Yeah, but he's like now he's got all this liquid and. I know what you're talking about because when we filmed that Ooh. redneck water park thing for Duck Dynasty, they had us go off that stupid rope swing. Yeah. Well, the mature athlete I am landed on my side. The mature uh, yeah. And I I did. I knocked, apparently I had a bunch of old earwax or something in my ear, and I knocked a big wax plug in my ear. So I'm like, oh, God. Oh, God, this hurts. I this, remember that. I mean, it was terrible. You, couldn't, you so, said, I got water in my ear. I can't I, get it out. I couldn't get it out. I could never get it out. And so I went to the doctor the next day, and the way they got that thing out, he just shot more water up in there behind yeah. it to get yeah, it that's out. That's what they and shoot when, water, yeah. And when he put when he put that pressure on the inside of my ear, I, I thought I was gonna pass out. I'm I was like, mm. I mean, I just it 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 like paralyzed me. I was like, oh, okay. but then as soon as out. that wall that ball come out, everything yeah. was good. Yeah, that's the way it was. Yeah, I asked him. I said, "What was that from?" He said, "That's from them stupid foam rubber earplugs you wear duck hunting." 
Really? He said every oh, time you every it. time you squeeze them and put them in there, you're just uh, pushing, you're pushing more wax, wax. Ah. past what you know whatever doesn't get cleaned out naturally. You just he says so. Don't wear them. Get get off of them. Wear muffs. Wear these new custom fit things they're making and Tetra, all that. Baby. Yeah, but I mean that was even before Tetra. That was wow. 2013 probably when we filmed that episode. Never had an earwax problem. But I don't. I don't. I hope you don't, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you ever had any ear problem? No. What's your biggest problem? Just your knee brought you some strife for a while. My knee, yeah. Just cholesterol. Yeah. <laughs> cholesterol. <laughs> cholesterol. No. Not cholesterol. Uh, I ain't you know, had bad cholesterol. Uh -uh. Really? He's fine, baby. You may want to check that. I am. <laughs> I did on my way in. <laughs> <laughs> I was running a little low. That's why I ate that burger when I got here. <laughs> yeah, I was hungry, boy. <laughs> Well, Johnny, do tell me about Tales from the Neighborhood, though. Tales know, like, from the Neighborhood. What neighbor, tell our neighborhood? The, yeah, yeah, your neighborhood. We, you live in that neighborhood. Uh, well, oh, he just, built that neighborhood. Nah, whoa, whoa. Hey, whoa. Hey. Easy, easy, easy. Another easy. man built that neighborhood. Easy. Friend. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I'd get him stirred up. Hey, you watch it. <laughs> I don't know. There's nothing really happening. I don't. I just go to work and go to bed now. No, I'm saying when you were a kid, like we're talking oh. like roaches in our ears yeah. and bite, yeah. eating river eels. I just want to hear like neighborhood story. Like mm. you moved into that neighborhood when I was like six. No, we're you, not talking about me. We're talking about you. Like tell me like some crazy stories. Y'all What's surely, the craziest thing that happened? Crashed your bike or, on that road, or, or put dishwashing liquid in somebody's fountain or something. Mm. Oh, would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're telling stories out of school uh, here. Okay. Uh, no, right. so so I live. There's a the the Robertsons. If you saw Duck Dynasty, I live on the end of the street. But there's one old angry man and a wild child that lived on the very end of the street that you didn't see much, and it'd be me and my father. Well, I was in for I don't remember what it was, but it was like I think it was Christmas Day, and I was bored, and I was in high school, so I got a whole thing of Don dish soap, mm -hmm. got on my bike, rode. to somebody's house i'll oh, go ahead and say it it's fine jason now. missy they don't listen oh. and i put yeah that's for sure i put a full gallon of dawn dish detergent in that fountain they oh, had it was yard. Hot. really uh the whole yard was just foamed <laughs> they oh, so then you killed all their grass oh, too oh yeah all oh, yeah. All oh, all yeah. Yeah. i actually tore some stuff up so i never really like admitted to it you have now though oh, oh yeah well yeah. We, in high school statute of limitations done run that's out that's right there. that's right yeah in high school we ran around and basically broke people's fountains for fun and would cause just the most giant bubbles. you wasn't one of them people rode around hitting mailboxes and crap like that no, i never it? hit them no i did did you oh yeah really did you? Man, those people make me mad. You, mm. tore, you hit mailboxes? Oh, yeah. That's a federal crime. A federal well, I don't do it. I'm, I'm cured of that now. But <laughs> <laughs> That was B.C.? Yeah, before Christ. Yeah. 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 Uh, I was just wondering. I probably caused a lot of damage in fountain plumbing issues, but good for the plumbers. And I didn't live. It made me laugh every Where time. I live, we didn't have no fountains. Neighbors just got one a few years ago, though. That's the first fountain on that street. I'm telling uh, you, it, it's fun. It's neighborhood. See, that's, that's yeah. what I said. There's surely. Don't. Yeah, we difference. didn't have. The only fountains we had were whenever we were out, out, out sticking out the back of the door peeing. So yeah, was, having uh, a contest. And, uh, and natural yeah. fountains. Oh, we went over. Drawing a line, see if you could outdo the day before. <laughs> <laughs> we would go over to Monroe to the fancy neighborhoods and really get after it, though. Really? Just all of them. Golly. We like was a pump. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take our last break. We'll get in that inbox when we get back. This chair is slowly going down this the whole time. The whole time. <laughs> I'm just slowly going, going down. You're going hey, down. You need a just better... like your bank account. Well, hey, yes. Yeah. Hey, when you run a small business, son, you gotta you gotta keep an eye on how much money you're spending, where it's going, when it's going there, all that. And that's why our friends over at Novo are a must-try for any small business in mind. Fortune favors the bold, the strong, and the brave. For your business to break out of anything holding you back, you need business checking as brave as you are. Introducing our friends, Novo Business Checking. Novo is powerfully simple business checking, and unlike the traditional banking model, Novo has no minimum balances, no transaction limits, and absolutely no hidden fees. It is FDIC insured, 
Instead of a one-size-fits-all approach, Novo is customized to your business to save you time and free up cash flow with seamless integrations to Stripe, Shopify, QuickBooks Online, and more. That's why fans call it the Swiss Army Knife of business checking account. And look, everybody got a Swiss Army Knife, That's right? right. Got to have one. I got one. Ain't nobody got the toothpick in it, but everybody still got their Swiss Army Knife. Sign up for signing up for Novo is quick, secure, and free. Join the community of over 150,000 fearless small businesses who found the customizable business checking solution that admires their bravery. Sign up for a free business checking account right now at novo.co slash duck. Plus, duck call room listeners get access to over $5,000 in perks and discounts. Go to novo.co slash duck to sign up for free novo.co slash duck novo platform inc is a fintech not a bank banking services provided by middlesex federal savings fa member fdic terms and conditions apply hello at duckcallroom.com is the email address if you have more questions for willie or anything like that shoot them over after this episode and the next time he's in, we'll, we'll archive them and have them for him. What you got in there? I got a couple. I, I actually, let me just say this. If anybody did have worms, I want Cy to comment because I know he had worms. He probably still has worms. So, so I'm like going to yield got... my time for worm <laughs> stuff to Cy. I want Cy to I'm gonna ask talk him. about I'm gonna his, ask him his worm about. history as he, well. As so. much as the boy can eat, he look, he he's bound to have to a have tapeworm of some sort. Yeah. Wormy. <laughs> A lot of worms in there. All right. We've had, oh, good grief, worms. <laughs> um, so, look, we're going to go serious. Because, Willie, what, what's your favorite thing? Tell me. Uh, what's my favorite thing? Pizza. No. Um, that you do. Um, that I do. Starts with an E. Uh, e. E. V. e. Can I buy a V? Yes. <laughs> Can I buy an A? Yes. A. He even knows how to spell evangelism. Uh, so, Willie's uh, super into... Telling people who don't believe in Jesus about Jesus. Right. And he's super into One day maybe you will be us. too. That's what my hope for you, Johnny T. <laughs> <There we go. laughs> and, and he's super into baptism. So I got a couple that I was like, man, this would be good if Willie came on. And then this week he's on. So we're going to go straight to it. Josh from La Crosse, Wisconsin. Ooh, there's this, a lot of fish up there. Is there? Ooh, it sure is. It's the birthplace of La Crosse too. All right. Yeah. Little known fact. All right, so he's got two questions. The first one: Why was Christine not on Duck Dynasty? She didn't want to be. Problem solved. <laughs> Number two: She was tired of. No, I think if you live with Sa, si, and you then the thought of going him. and being oh. with him all day, the, she's like, "No, nah, I'm good. Yeah, I just, the I'll best, deal with him from when he gets home." The best thing Christine got out of Duck Dynasty was Sa si legit had a full time. Yeah, for real. Like, yeah. Like, because when yeah, he that's still- just my opinion. I, just, I don't know. I won't speak for Aunt Christine. All right. So this one is kind of serious, and we need a little context. He's right. 39 years old, All has right. never been a godly man. Okay. He does believe in a creator, just not Christianity. My parents always told me I could believe what I wanted to believe. True. They told me to respect. they would respect my choice. My mom believes in the Almighty but does not attend church, and my dad grew up a Jehovah Witness. Don't get me wrong, I have so much respect for someone who teach, preaches the gospel. Uh, when I do go to church, it's usually Christmas. I always give full attention, blah, 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 blah. Uh, most people I've met who are godly don't have the weight on the shoulders of what's next all around their lives because they're better because of it. So I've chosen. To, he's chosen to raise his children the same way and letting them uh, believe what they want to believe. She has a 13-year-old and 18-year-old. Uh, and within the past year, the 13 year old starting to go to a church service on Wednesday nights and going to Bible camp uh, with her cousin for the past few years. Here's the question. How do I approach the subject when she has questions about God? I want to be respectful in her beliefs, but I need to stay true to myself. Don't get me wrong. I really do want to believe in the almighty, but I just don't. I suppose I could tell her that I do believe, but I would just be lying to myself and her. Josh. Might be the greatest lie you ever told. Wow. <laughs> Josh. <laughs> Heavy. That is. Well, huh? I mean, what's, uh, you know, I've heard a lot of stories. This is like a lot of them in one. So, because we've got some who believe in the Almighty, don't go to church, Jehovah Wit. We got a whole, we got all kinds of things going. One is this whole idea that 
your you, you can your parents told you you could believe what you want to believe. Here's a newsflash: you can believe whatever you want to believe, whether your parents tell you, or whether they don't. You know, belief is belief. Um, which is another thing I was actually thinking about this morning. If you say you don't believe in Jesus, I would actually say, do you then you do you not believe he was even on Earth? I would assume the answer would be, yeah, no, I think he was on Earth. You just don't believe that he was who he said he was, and so that that he's not God. So I'm assuming because it seems like there is a belief in something that was created, and so, um, uh. I think for your child, I would, I mean, me personally, I would certainly hope that they would find a faith and can believe in something bigger than what they're seeing on this planet. Um, I don't think you should be the one to teach or say that you shouldn't be dishonest. I mean, if you don't believe it, just say, I don't believe it. Uh, But the other is actually, you probably should read, you may should read the New Testament and read what it actually says. And so uh, then even if you didn't believe, at least you could share that conversation with your kids and say, well, hey, I read it and here's what I'm seeing. And um, and if you deduct a non-belief there, then um, that's one way to go uh, through this life. Uh, I was telling a friend the other day, I don't know how people do go through life without any faith in anything. It just seems like it's a big luck of the draw. <laughs> and I would just be like panic going, that would be miserable. So, um, so I'm going to choose to believe. And I would, if I sat with you, we'd probably talk for 30 minutes about kind of where all this came from. And, um, but I choose to believe and, but because I've read the new Testament and it makes a lot more sense to me than anything else I've seen as far as what we believe in. So that, that's a, Dundee, that was a hard one to unpack. And, yeah. And, uh, and, uh, well, I was going to do the full. It needs to be a month. That yeah. was going to be a whole segment. I thought we could do that, but we got into worms. Good answer. All right. You got a short one? Ooh, maybe. Goes long, goes long. We're talking about Jesus. Deal with it. Michelle from West Virginia emails in, and this one's kind of heavy uh, as well, but I think Willie's going to have a great answer to it. Uh, and I saved it for him just because she has a 13 year old who's been asking about baptism. Mm hmm. And if he needs to be baptized to be saved, he spoke with a pastor at a local church who said that he would get him baptized as soon as he scheduled it with the local church. (laughs) That probably answers your question, Michelle, but we'll get to it. As this church, this preacher is located, doesn't have a way to perform them in his church. That was last year. They ain't scheduled one since then. So she's afraid that her son will lose interest. She also, and I just want to thank you for, she's an ER nurse. Hats off to you, ma'am. And Absolutely. She works very hard. She feels like she's being a bad mom because she works so hard, but that's a tough place to be in, and don't beat yourself up. Um, he has a wonderful ho- father, her husband, but he's not saved. So I guess what I'm asking is, can people only be baptized on Sundays? Because that seems to be the consistent <laughs> consensus here in Fayette County, West Virginia. Golly. All righty, then. I don't remember what day... I obeyed the gospel. What day of the week? But it, I guess it was typically Monday because it was the last day of duck season, but it was at 1 o'clock in the morning. So. I like how you I mean, said typically whenever it was, you've only been baptized, but you're like typically that. Well, I was typically kinda, I would do that at like 1 in the morning, but. No, he's saying. No, he's saying he got baptized on the, day, the, last, day on the last day of duck season, but it oh, was like one in the morning. No, so it was Sunday, so was I good. guess it was Monday. Okay, yeah. let, let me. By let the me. way, we count time. I'll just before we get involved with this, I'm gonna let this man answer because he's he's very astute in this part. I've been a part of several baptisms with this guy right here. <laughs> Ain't nary a one of them happened on a Sunday. Really. No. I've seen a couple on a Sunday. Dang, no, uh, yeah. it was always at your house at who knows where between the hours of 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. And we found the first thing of water we could find, whether it was. I, I was baptized twice, and the one on the Sunday didn't take. I'm just going to throw that out there. You yeah. just got wet. The second one. Yeah. Redo. Oh, yeah, no. rerun. Okay, so let me, let me answer this question. I'm not a Bible scholar, but I have. Uh, read these things a few times and so i would say this there's there is no day of the week um uh the jailer comes to mind in the book of acts where um 
Remember the guys were in jail, the jail busted open, they were going to leave, they didn't, he was going to kill himself, and then they went to his house, and it says at that hour of the night, the jailer and his whole family uh, were baptized, and so uh, uh, probably wasn't a Sunday. Um, And so, yeah, this can be any time, whenever the person is ready. There's no schedule needed for a church or a pastor, that's not in the New Testament, Um, so yeah, whenever this person's ready, this is your son at 13. Now I would just, you know, I would just say the person needs to know exactly what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And so if you're worried about them losing interest, I wouldn't worry about that. If they lose interest, don't, they don't need to get baptized because this is not something that you're interested in for a second. And then later on, you're not interested. Uh, you can read uh, Luke chapter 14, the cost of being a disciple, where Jesus is pretty clear about what it's going to take to follow him. Um, I would put it in our terms as saying, if my wife, if I was like, if I don't ask her to marry me right now, she's liable to lose interest next month. And well, if that's the case, we probably shouldn't get married. So um, if your son is ready to, make Jesus the Lord of his life, and he is going to confess he will be Lord of his life and repent of his sins. And uh, when that time is ready, uh, he should be baptized. But if there's any flakiness or uncertainty, then just wait. Wait until that person is ready to go. And then at that point, I wouldn't wait on anybody to schedule anything because that that's never that was never used in the New Testament. So, yeah. That answers that. Hey, and mom, don't be afraid to do it yourself. Yeah. It ain't got to be yeah. a preacher. You you are perfectly qualified to go baptize your son. It's just, yeah. You are absolutely 110 Baptism qualified. simply means to dip into water. And so now what spiritually happens, you can read Romans 6, 1 through 4. That's what spiritually happens when you're baptized. So, yeah. uh, but as far as uh, times and dates, yeah, when uh, in the book of Acts, when someone heard the gospel uh, or they had this encounter with Jesus like uh, Saul did, you know, who became Paul, who wrote half the New Testament. Uh, He encounters Jesus. uh, He falls down. He's blinded for three days. He goes into the city. um, He finds Ananias, and he says, you know, I need to know what to do. And so it said he was uh, baptized right there. And so that's when he did it, and then he immediately started teaching others and and getting after it. So, uh, yeah, usually that's the that's the deal. They hear the gospel, and then they're they're baptized. Acts chapter two, uh, when they heard the gospel, they said, "What must we do?" And Peter says, "Repent and be baptized." So, those are immediate. That's immediately when it's happening. So, yeah, don't get hung up on the days of the week and all that. And yeah, that's all just kind of Americanized stuff that we've that we've done. Uh, and so, uh, we certainly want your son to know what he's doing it for, which is actually Jesus and the good news. Amen. Well, boss, thank you for coming in. You want me to wrap Johnny us D. Up? Send us out. Send us out of here, maybe, buddy. Maybe Willie said seven. Ver- Stop drawing on me. <laughs> Never changes. <laughs> Romans 6, he just mentioned it. We're going to go one through four. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means, Johnny D. By no means, exclamation point. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or Or don't don't you you know know that that all of us us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore therefore buried buried with him him through baptism baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. And that was the life we were talking about for your son, that new life. And that's what we're looking for. By the way, I was reading. He (laughs) He was not. (laughs) Uh, Amen. That's that's one to uh, know by heart for sure. (laughs) Boss, thank you for coming in. Come back anytime you want to. We're out. We'll see y'all next time right here in the Duck Call Room.